Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video. I'm Matt with Option Omega. This video is all about stop losses in the Option Omega backtesting tool and the various ways that you can use and not use the different types of stop losses and the configurations that might make sense for you. Let's get into it. Okay, let's look at our first backtest example. This is just going to be a very basic backtest. This has no stop loss. And just a note here as we go through these. These back tests are designed to demonstrate and show how different features work in the back test tool. This is not a good back test. None of these are good back tests. They are missing key things that would make them robust back tests. And note, when I say good back tests in this context, I'm not saying whether it's a good trade or not. I'm just saying the setup of the back test. So we're going to have certain tests that don't have essential things like fees and commissions slippage. We are using this video to demonstrate what the different stop losses do and don't do. So the first one here, what kind of stop loss do we have? We have no stop loss. Okay. This is just a very basic. You're selling a 10 wide call credit spread and letting it expire. So this is an example of a back test where you may want a stop loss. So let's look at the basic stop loss. Let's go here and we'll do a 100% stop loss. So that's going to stop us out at 100%. And immediately you look at it and go, Matt, you can't do math. This isn't 100%. 100% of 490 twice of 490 is not 990. That's correct. That's because the back test is using one minute data at the one minute marker at 332. It was not exactly 100% of 490. So we're using one minute data. It's very high resolution, but most of the time, whatever you look at on a one minute is not going to be exact percentage of a stop loss or a profit target. So that's the first thing to note. Okay. Let's iterate on this a little bit. So the first thing is a stop loss, one minute data. And again, it may or may not be exactly what your stop loss is. Something else that's important to remember. If you want a stop loss of let's say $4. Okay. We can change this to fixed loss, $4. Somebody might say, I want four. So $4 in options parlance is $400. You put in $400. Let's see what happens. You say, Matt, it, the back tester doesn't work. I have a $400 stop loss here. The way it works is this stop loss is just like your broker. So if you want a $4 stop loss, you put in $4. There you can see. Now what's interesting is, Unlike the previous example at 1230 on this date, it was exactly a $4 stop loss. That's what the data was at. And reminder, we're using the derived mid price for all of these prices. Let's keep going. Let's look at a different option. We have something in here. If you have a stop loss, we'll do $2 and we'll do a per leg stop loss on one leg. What is this going to do? Let's run it and find out. Here's what this does. This is taking the trade and the per leg stop loss is only on one leg. So if you note, what happens is at that time when that leg has hit a $2 stop loss, we are closing the entire trade because this was a 10 wide spread. A $2 stop loss was not a $2 loss on the entire spread, right? We had longs that were only 10 points away in a high VIX market. Those also changed in value. If you want to verify that, you can simply do this. Eliminate the long right there. We'll do this just to make sure the test runs. And then let's run this again. Boom. So that by itself, 22 and a half. 2570. I'm going to show you one other thing that we'll come back to just so you can see exactly how the tool works. $2, right? Exactly what we had. So that is how per leg stop loss works. Per leg stop loss finds a stop loss on an individual leg and then closes the entire trade in the back tester. Let's keep going. Something else that we can do. If we take off per leg stop loss, we go back to this. We can trail a stock loss here and the tooltip explains exactly what it does. If a minimum profit target is used in our case, it is not, but you can do this with a minimum profit target. The stop loss will begin trailing 
only after the profit target is reached. Again, doesn't apply here. But if no value is used, then the stop loss will trail as soon as the trade is open. So remember, these tool tips are here for your benefit. You can use them whenever. Let's run this again. Okay. And then let's turn on the trailing stop and see it in action. And we're not going to have a minimum PT. So you can see the difference, right? It went from 695 to 660. And so what we can do, let's look at the trade replay. You can see what happened, right? The trade, because this is a credit trade, we actually would want to see the value of it going down. So what happened is the value went down a little bit here. It went down a little bit more. So the stop loss was actually calculated from the lower price because the trade at this point from when we put it on in the back test at 945 to 10 o'clock, the trade was profitable. It went from our open price here of 490 down to 445. Again, this isn't exactly $2. Now, how can we do that? Go here and I will explain what I'm doing with cap losses why you may or may not want to use them. If you remember, this, this trade traded down to 445. If we cap the losses, that's going to make our stop loss exactly $2. Now, market makers do not cap losses. We will talk about what cap losses is, why to use it or not use it, I'm just exposing you to the tool at this point. We've covered a couple different things. We've covered the basic stop loss, which works on one minute. We've covered per leg stop loss and how that functioned. We've covered trailing stop loss. As you can see, there's a lot you can do with stop losses. Now, let's cover something really exciting that OO's had for a couple years, extremely popular. The most common ticker in our community by far is SPX and the most common DTE is zero DTE. So here's what intraminute stop loss does, IMSL for short. Uses the high and low values inside of a minute bar. It's only on SPX and SPY and Option Omega, but we have it back to 2013. So it only works on those tickers and when all the contracts are zero DT. If you're trading some sort of horizontal, calendarized, diagonalized time spread, this will not be available. What happens is this will use, as it says, it'll use the intraminute data and we have two different choices within this. We have NBBO only. What is NBBO? National Bid Best. That will be less data. The NBBO plus trades actually is the NBBO plus historical trades to determine whether or not a stop was triggered. Let's go back and look at this example here. Let's run, we'll run it with out cap losses. Okay. Here it is stop loss and we stopped out at 1032. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the stop loss. We're going to take off. Whoops. Let's run it without this trailing stop. We'll get a baseline test here. So this test closed at 1051. And now we're going to go back to stop loss. We're going to choose intermittent stops. We're going to choose intermittent stops. We're going to choose MBBO plus trade and run it. And as you can see, it got stopped out a lot sooner. Obviously, the amount's different because the mid was different. Again, we're using mid. Now, if you're using IMSL, this trade replay here is not going to take into account an intra-minute data. This is one-minute data only. Okay, so think candles versus wicks. This trade replay is one-minute data. So, now we have IMSL. Why would somebody use IMSL? And now is the time that we would talk about cap losses. After many millions of back tests and years of community feedback. IMSL has been very much appreciated by the OO community and people find it highly reliable and possible to dial in very robust back tests. So intraminute stop loss, how a lot of folks use it is they use a three tiered approach. They use intraminute stop loss. They will use slippage. Again, this is going to depend. Your slippage value is going to be completely contextual on what you're trading. But stop loss slippage, if you read the tooltip, it is an override that applies for exit slippage whenever it's a stop loss. We'll do 35 cents and we will do slippage and we will also cap losses. So we've played around with cap losses. We haven't really talked about it. Let's talk about cap losses. We'll run this first. There we go. 
So we got a different value. Here's how cap losses works. Cap losses is, again, this backtest is a simulation. Cap losses is in the backtest. It does exactly what it says. It caps the loss at the value. So if you look at this value, we capped the loss at $2, 690. We add our slippage in 35 cents. What do we get? 725. Again, this isn't a good back test. We don't have fees. We don't have commissions, et cetera, et cetera. Just showing the tool. So why would you use cap losses? Because listen, market makers don't offer cap losses. Your broker doesn't have cap losses. SIBO doesn't have cap losses. Why is it even in the tool to begin with? Here's why. Because folks are trying to simulate a certain thing happening. It's important when you use the back tester that you understand what the little check boxes are that you're clicking, what the values are in that you're typing. You have to understand the context of what you're doing. So with cap losses, it's often used cap losses, with IMSL, with stop loss slippage. And folks for years now have dialed in very accurate zero DT back tests. And the whole point of Option Omega is for you to rigorously back test strategies that will give you confidence that they are either worth doing or not worth doing. So what we're after is high confidence. That's the point. That's the goal. So cap losses is one of the tools you have to understand, like all of it, why you would or would not use it. So again, how folks use that typically is they're using this to simulate some sort of order in their broker, or whatever. They're using cap losses. They're using a stop loss. They're using IMSL and they're using slippage. So it's part of a whole approach typically used in a trifecta where you use IMSL, you use a healthy amount of slippage and you use cap losses. Again, nobody can tell you what to put for slippage. Well, people can tell you, but that's up to the user to decide. A lot of folks on a five wide or 10 wide, they might use 25 cents, 35 cents, 45 cents for stop loss slippage. Again, it depends on what they're trading. Even in the zero DTE world, if people ratio these, depending on how far out of the money they are, depending on the vol environment, these are all going to have a big impact and what kind of slippage needs to be applied to that stop loss. Okay, let's talk about something else with stop losses that we haven't talked about yet. In the miscellaneous options, which is where you find the punisher, there is another choice that comes up when you have a stop loss. This is a DC. This is a DC that's been around for years. This back test has floated around for years with all sorts of iterations. We don't have a stop loss on it. There's a whole separate discussion on why you would probably not want a stop loss on a DC back test, which is another video, which I will link below. If we put one on again, for the sake of a video demonstration, you will see we have a new option here. It is require two consecutive hits at stop loss. What does this do? This is the inverse of a very common choice, which is required two consecutive hits at profit target. What happens with this? Let's look at it before we put it on. What happens with this is if you have a trade like a DC in a higher vol environment, right? We were in around a 20, low twenties VIX environment. A lot of times there are brief moments of illiquidity in the options pricing. If you've ever traded options in real life that are not zero DT, you will observe this. It's very observable on 30, 60, 90, 120 day options trades. It also happens on shorter term ones, which is why I picked this back test to demonstrate it. As you can see here, we have these little heartbeat spikes in both directions. There's a heartbeat spike here. As we get later, you see even more of them here. Here's one to the upside, one to the upside. And this one is to the downside. So in the span of a minute, it dropped, you know, a buck 50. Is that real? Well, you can look at the VIX and you can look at the underlying to make that determination. But what two hits does on both the profit target and the stop loss is two hits at stop loss requires the condition to be met two minutes in a row before it will consider the profit target or the stop loss fill. So why would you use this or not use this? Folks are typically using two consecutive hits at stop loss, again, in a backtest simulation 
to determine if their back test would have gotten stopped out due to liquidity. So that's why you would use it. It's in there as an option. It will make the back tests less rigorous to use two consecutive hits at stop loss. It will make the back test more rigorous to use two consecutive hits at profit target. Why is that? Of course, think about it. It's a stop loss if it's a profit target. If you have more profit targets that you have to hit and less stop losses that you have to hit with a single hit, you're going to have a different back test. So using two consecutive hits at stop loss, it's in there because it was strong demand for the community because people testing longer DTE stuff or even shorter DTE, this is a one week trade. They wanted it in there to see are these intermittent one minute price spikes legit or not. And the reality is, is we're using so much data. It's such high resolution, one minute increments. We're looking at so many different data points that you occasionally do get a, a data point that is a brief moment of illiquidity. So that's why two consecutive hits at stop loss is in there. Just know that if you use two consecutive hits at stop loss, it will make the back tests less rigorous. The same as capping your stop losses, right? It's important. They're in there. They're useful. It's super important to understand why you're using them and what the proper context is for using these things. If you haven't watched the video on the Punisher, that's the next video that I would recommend watching because that not only goes into stop loss details like we just talked about, it also goes into some stuff with the profit targets. It's super helpful. The last thing I want to talk about is this. I want to talk about one other thing that gets mentioned in the same breath as stop losses. It is not a stop loss. I want to be clear about it. It's not a stop loss. People often talk about it, so we're just going to spend a minute on it. In exit conditions, there are some various options for price movement exits, exit when tested. So this one has an exit when the put or the call is a certain percent out of the money. We will bring one up and take a look at it. And I'm just going to touch on this for a second. Again, this is not a stop loss. It's also not intra minute data. It is one minute data. And that's what I want to emphasize. This is one minute data. So if we look at it, this was a put testing. We can see that when we put on the trade, the underlying was up here above 5,900. We take it off. It's approaching 5,750. So when the put got tested, the back tester closed the entire trade. Again, that's one minute data. There's no option for intraminute underlying price exits. It's one minute data. So it's not a stop loss. It's an exit. People sometimes call it a stop loss. That's an inaccurate terminology. It's actually possible to use underlying exits as a profit taking condition, depending on the back test setup. Again, this tool is extremely flexible. You can do a lot of different setups with it. So just wanted to clarify that that the, the intermittent data is only applicable on intermittent stop loss. The exit one underlying is still one minute data. We've reviewed a bunch of different things. We've gone through regular stop losses. We've gone through, we've gone through trailing stops. We've gone through per leg stop losses. We've gone through required two consecutive hits at stop loss. Thanks for checking out the video. We covered a bunch of different stop loss things. Hopefully that's helpful. If you haven't watched the Punisher video, that's the next step. And of course, if you took backtesting bootcamp, you probably know everything that's in this video. If you haven't taken backtesting bootcamp or need a refresher, make sure you jump on academy.optionomega.com and check out backtesting bootcamp. Thank you.